this is strong. Drum roll. Drum roll. All right, ready? Yep. In three. I thought we already started. Well, he just messed up the three, the three mm-hmm. countdown. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Keeping It R.E. Thanks for joining us today. We have a very special guest, the Nick Cressy, the man, the myth, the legend. We will see his story on 60 Minutes one day from the starboard in Dewey Beach, Delaware, <laughs> to Resourceive, which is a telecom company taking over the world. He's here with us today. We're pumped to have you, Nick. Hey, Paul and Paige. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, huge, huge introduction there. 60 minutes. I appreciate that. It's coming. Well, it would take about 60 seconds to tell the story, so at least we're efficient. But no, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Paige, why don't, cool. you, uh, why don't you kick off the conversation and we'll, we'll take it from here. Uh, well, I don't really know how to kick off this conversation. I don't know a lot about, I know some of what you do. So, well, tell us what, give us your background. Who yeah. are you? What do you do? All right, yeah, I'll, I'll give the elevator pitch of and, myself. And, and, and start, yeah. from, start from what people really want to know. Start from Delaware, man. Start from Dewey Beach, Delaware. Start from scratch. And, and yeah. tell us the progression to boot camp in Chicago, then out to California, and then what you were doing with the Navy for a couple years, and then your transition into what you're doing now, Resourceive, um, which is really what we want to talk about ultimately. So Cool. Yeah, l- right let me take you down the story, the path of my life. So, born and raised in Milford, Delaware, even before the Dewey days, uh, so grew up in, in Delaware. Weaved and wound my way through college. Eventually, got a get, got my degree in uh, at Wilmington University in in Delaware. And while I was finishing up there, I came upon the Starboard. So I uh, met Steve Montgomery, Monty, as everyone knows him by, and uh, we we kind of hit it off. So I ended up being there for four years, and it was for the best years of my entire life. Lived above the place with my wife, girlfriend at the time. You can imagine how that was, a lot of Mama Celeste, so that was cool. Um, and of course met you, Paul, and, and, and we had we had a good old time. So from there, uh, like I said, I'd finished my business degree and it was kinda like jump into the business world, per se, maybe stay at the Starboard, which isn't the worst case, or, uh, or kinda take a chance on myself. And I was always huge into sports, pretty competitive person, uh, it's kinda in my DNA. So I, I decided that I had always kind of uh, been drawn to special operations. I, I always thought that uh, you know that, that team building and the dynamics from the outside looking in looked really captivating to me. So I did my research, ended up going to Navy boot camp in 2011 with a SWIC contract, Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. And uh, you know, boot camp was boot camp. It's two months of Chicago in the winter. Worst Christmas of my life for sure, um, but <laughs> we don't need to really talk too much about that. The but people in charge loved you. That whole well, to say that I have no military bearing to this day even is an understatement. But I, I got through, uh, and then it was out to Coronado, and of course everyone knows Navy SEALs. Uh, the the boat side of that is SWIC. and that was the unit I was trying out for. Um, about a six to ten month long all in uh, pipeline and and like I said out in Coronado so when I was comfortable that I was gonna make it uh, moved my my wife she flew out and, and stayed in Imperial Beach we got an apartment in Imperial Beach and and uh, finished out there and and then you do some language training and then you get to pick your team so I was lucky enough to be able to pick my team so then came back to Virginia Beach and did four and a half years there. Obviously, I picked that because of the proximity to Delaware, and that's where that's where family is. So, so that's it. So, it, one one thing that I think is interesting, and I just know this from your background, and I don't know the exact numbers from boot camp in Chicago out to Coronado in California. How many people started in boot camp on day one? How many people made it through to the team that you were trying to be a part of? Yes, and, and it's a, like all in. It's like a 10 to 12 month process right with boot camp plus yeah with, with boot camp with the eight weeks of boot camp look getting through boot camp the bar isn't aggressively high could I, uh, could I get you through? you would pass with flying colors because i'm sure you fold all your clothes uh, you you <laughs> equal it you'd both have a good chance as long as you're relatively like clean and can fold clothes you'll be all right in boot camp um 
but but really, the, the great thing about boot camp is it teaches the camaraderie that you end up kind of learning and, and using down the road, and it does kind of set your your military mindset. Um, so I think we had eighty people in that in in that original boot camp class. We kind of split off. Some went rescue swimmer, some went SWIC, some went SEAL, and then my SWIC class. All in was over 100 people, I think 110, and we ended up graduating with 13. A um, lot of injuries, a lot of people that, that, you know, bad luck, some of it, and some of it's just, it just gets cold. Well, I mean, that's an incredible number, and you and I joke, and we've joked in the past, you know, we did a Tough Mudder together. Oh, Tough Mudder. Shout out, shout out Tough Mudder. We did a Tough Mudder together a couple years ago. Oh, geez, a couple years ago. This mm. was 10 years ago. Easy. Um, one of the most badass things I have ever personally done. Nick describes it as the single most insignificant thing he's ever done in his life. It was that easy for him, and that shows. I mean, over 110 people to try out, and, you know, 13 people are selected. So it's an incredible story, and it's something that you don't share with a lot of people, which is why I'm prying this out of you, because I knew that was not something that you were going to share without me essentially making you do that. Yeah, and, but it's, and it's something to be extremely proud of. And, and I am, and, and it's a differentiator in business for sure. And it's something that operators that are getting out now are, are, are leveraging more and more of, and not leveraging to get an unfair advantage, but we do learn some things that self-promotion isn't inherently in our, in our DNA in, in that job. But when you get out, you realize that you can impact and you've learned a lot of stuff that is worth sharing. And that's why I think we'll get into the Honor Foundation and Elite Meet, um, two programs that are like, hey, these are what operators do, hire them. And, and it's it's pretty powerful stuff. Well, why don't we, why don't we transition to the, into that right now? Because yeah. I think the next part of the conversation is, is you know, some of the skills that you learned mm -hmm. with your time in the Navy, obviously traveled around the world and did a lot of things that you're not allowed to talk to people about, which I think is mm. really cool, even though you probably can, but I just, I always <laughs> like to say that. Of course, but, everything's a secret. Right? Yeah, everything's a secret. But, you know, a lot of the, you know, leadership and, and a lot of the things that you learned, you've been able to utilize in your now career. So yeah. l let's, let's touch on that a little bit. I mean, Elite Meet is, is really yeah. cool. Yeah, so I, so to, as I'm transitioning out after four years of the boat teams, there was an institute called the Honor Foundation, and it's heavily funded by the Navy SEAL Foundation, and it's uh, a 13-week course that's growing like crazy right now, but uh, it's basically a, a, a transition workshop, and you go two times a week, and, and you're put in a room with, with successful business people that kind of mentor and coach you on your transition. They, they, this is really intended to not only help the guys that have been in five or six years, like myself, but the guys that have been in for 20, 25 years that are technically retiring, but are looking for that next opportunity, right? So as I was in the Honor Foundation, I was in the same cohort as John Allen. John Allen had an idea for Elite Me. So it was really just right time, right place, right time for me. The founder of Elite Meet is is pushing this this new um, veteran oriented, soft oriented, special operation forces oriented um, networking events essentially. And I'm also in this Honor Foundation, which is teaching me how to show up at those networking events and maximize my potential. So I actually was at the very first Elite Meet in New York City, and I met my CEO, and he stood up and he said, "Hi, I'm Tom Gasky." He starts talking about he's a D1 wrestler and all this stuff, and of course, you know, jumped out to me immediately, and and we just hit it off. And you met him at that event at the very first elite I didn't, meet. I didn't know yeah, that. in May of I guess 2017. I remember you attending it. I didn't know you. Yeah, so I was actually still at Honor Foundation as I was going to elite meet, and um, you know, from there the rest is kind of history. He hired Tom, and Resource have ended up hiring two people, me and. Kyle Hall. Kyle Hall is now the director of operations, and I'm now running the BD group. So a firm that was founded in 2001 now is relying very heavily on two elite meat hires, and we've actually hired two more since then. I think we have another one coming down the pipe. So pretty exciting, and uh, they're doing some really cool stuff there. That's really cool. Well, while we're on the topic of Resourcev, why don't you tell us what Resourcev does, what your mm -hmm. role is, and why Resourcev has taken over the world? Is yeah, that well, an understatement? Yeah, of course, of course. Now, resource, resource is great. We've, the firm's been around since 2001, like I said, founded by Tom Geske. And it's, it's a pure play niche consulting firm. 
and we're telecommunication subject matter experts that are primarily focused on spam reduction and network optimization for private equity firms, their portfolio companies, and middle market. So essentially what that looks like is um, you know, we, we, we help navigate the very turbulent waters of the IT infrastructure. Uh, and, and typically we, we do amazing savings. We don't really charge anything from the client. And, and we're an extension of their IT team. And as the, you, you teed it up as taking over the world, uh, IT seems to be taking over the world. Yeah. And, and you're playing your role in that. We're, play, we're, we're fitting in there very nicely. And you know, every new private equity firm relationship that you know, generates introductions is, is thought of as a, as a partnership for us. And um, it's, it's really cool. I mean, I never thought I'd be in, in telecommunication consulting for one. But I also didn't think as a 32-year-old coming out of the military that I'd be meeting with managing directors and operating partners at top 10 firms in the entire world with billions of dollars of assets under management. So it's pretty it's cool. cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, so being with you, are, like where you are right now in your career and everything that you've done in the military, what do you think is the best lesson you have learned, either in military or in your current position? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I think having the confidence to kind of take a chance on yourself um, is, is something that, that I've learned. And but with confidence, you have to be you have to bring it right. Like you, you can't be confident, falsely confident, or or you know fake it until you make it. If you will, I, I hear people say that all the time, and it's like. That's how you get hurt in the military, but that's also in business how you fall flat on your face. Sometimes you need to do that, but but very often you need to do the diligence necessary um, to have the confidence in yourself. So really, the, the military inherently gave me uh, that internal mindset that you know anything can be overcome with hard work and perseverance. Now you just got to go do the hard work and perseverance. Awesome. Good answer. Yeah, that's a really good answer. <laughs> that's strong. Also, shout out Red Bull before we forget. Yeah, I give you wings. Yeah. Red Bull. It's our main sponsor. Also, shout out our unofficial official sponsor, the Starbird in Dewey Beach, Delaware. Yeah. We asked them to sponsor this podcast. Uh, Monty and Toasty have not responded. Really? We should call the guys at Starbird TV. I'm sure they. <laughs> yeah, we should do that. We should actually call them live. <laughs> All right. So at the end of this podcast, we're gonna keep it running. We're gonna call Monty. If he doesn't answer, we're calling Toasty. We're just gonna go back and forth to figure out why they won't sponsor our podcast. That's a good question. I'm I glad think, someone's asking. I think it's fair. I mean, I think it's, very it's fair. good. It's it's free advertising for them. Yeah. Guys. Why wouldn't they want to do that? Come on. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, Nick, you have just gotten into the game of video content mm. using LinkedIn as a Ooh. platform. Yeah. How pumped are you about that? I'm pumped. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm pumped. Did anybody <laughs> motivate you to do that? No. Well, you a little bit, unfortunately. <laughs> More pain, <laughs> no, I mean, look, you're out there and you're doing cool stuff, and you're and you're you're doing you know content weekly. It seems like, and both you guys and and Chad, I know as well. Uh, and it's impressive, and it's the time. It's time to do that. Like I'm hearing it more and more. Gary V. Everyone loves Gary V. But like, there's so many people that are like, get out there, go do it. Uh, quote that I love is, um, uh, now I forget it. No, uh, ships are safe in a harbor, but that's not what ships are made for. Yeah. And it's the same thing with your career, and it's the same thing with your social media presence. It's like. Do you just want to be another number of someone on LinkedIn who you're connected with, or do you want to be someone that separates himself? And I Amazing think we difference. all have the feeling to be the ones to separate yourself. Well, one of the cool things that you and I have talked about, talking about your experience in the military translated into your current role at Resourcev, to me, is extremely interesting because I do not have a military background. So that point of view and that perspective, to me, is really cool and different. So of course, when you post a video, I'm all over it, right. and you know I watch them a couple times to really understand what you're talking about and really understand the correlation between it. And you posted a video last week, I think, and you were talking about purpose versus presence, mm -hmm. and I think you nailed it. So if you could just kind of give us a little bit of background on that, I think that would be that would be cool. Not to make you repeat yourself. No, yeah, but I think it's a good conversation to have, and it's the powers in its simplicity. Because if you think about almost anything that you're probably excellent at, you're inherently purposeful, right? Like anything that you care about, 
and you want to excel at, if it's running, if it's cold calling, whatever it is, you're purposeful, you have a direct intent to accomplish. And where I see the presence piece come in is either something that you're not that interested in or something that you're overly comfortable and complacent in. And I see myself do it all the time. And things that I just kind of, uh, you know, your ability kind of just kind of takes over and you're on cruise control, you can just kind of show up and be present. Um, and really, you lack the power and the motivation and the follow through to, to really move the needle, especially in a professional setting. Well, it, you know, and you also touched on the personal setting too, which oh, personal I, think, huge. I think resonates with a lot of people. And what you were talking about, you can describe this a little more, is like, okay, you're at home with your wife and kids, yep. and are, are you being purposeful in that moment, right. or are you being present in that moment? Because it's two completely different things. I mean, if you're sitting there on your phone answering emails, taking calls, scrolling on Instagram, you know, probably checking out the Keeping It RE podcast. Always, yeah, yeah exactly. Probably, it's in one ear at all times. I and, would imagine that's right. what most people are doing when they're hanging out with their family, but that's the big difference between being purposeful in what you're doing in that moment and actually being present. All right, and what makes the impact? Like, you can go through your whole day, daily routine, and you get done at the end of the night, you lay down, and you're like, what the hell did I do today? But if you're purposeful and you're intentional in all of your actions and you can kind of sit back at the end of the night and you say, wow, I did a lot. Like I, that was an impactful day. And when you realize that you have one of those days ever and then the next day you start over, it, it's it, to me, it just feels like a waste any time that I'm doing something just to go through the motions. And again, I think I said it in on my post, like complacency breeds you know being very comfortable and being comfortable breeds being average and being average is something I have no intention of doing and it sounds like you guys are with me oh we're with you <laughs> yeah with you on that. strong <laughs> strong um, all right so we have a couple minutes left mm -hmm. uh, before mm -hmm. you have to get to your very important meeting which is why you're mm -hmm. actually in the district right now exactly. so we appreciate you taking 20 30 minutes with us yeah, this is fun. this is a ton of fun so we're gonna Sorry. completely put you on the spot we did not tell you that we're gonna do this. Um, That's good. Paige is gonna fire off a speed round of questions, and the first thing that comes to mind, just answer it. Yeah, don't so think it, about it, just answer it. Okay. It's, we have eight to 10 questions, and they're, they're fairly easy, but. I'm probably gonna think you, about it, but okay. Well, if you need to think about it to make sure that yeah. you get the right answer, I mean, there's a couple in here that <laughs> I'm really hoping you get the right answer. He's teeing you up for it. That's what I was fearful of. <laughs> All right, so favorite sports team? Steelers. Me too. Of course. <laughs> okay, Deep favorite iPhone that. app? Um, Twitter. All right. If you could go one place in the world today, where would it be? Australia. Best bar in the world? Oh, Star. <laughs> Dewey Beach. Best beer in the world? Uh, natural Light. <laughs> Full name. No natural prince. Natural Light. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, for the rest of your life, pick one. Kanye or Jay-Z? I knew this would be tough. Three, two, one. Jigga. Oh, wow. my gosh. Wow. I'm surprised by that. Yeah. I've been a long time. Oh, I didn't man. expect that. Yeah. Blueprint and Black Album. Kanye. Yeah, I Blueprint and Black Album, Blueprint. I gotta go. Old Kanye or new Kanye? Just kidding. Oh, I love the old Kanye. <laughs> I wish there was more old Kanye. Oh, yeah. Tell totally me great. about it. All right, um, do you like Paul's hair? I love it, and I like how much I like the preparation that goes into it. All right, this it. question is not on the paper, but I do have to ask: How many inches in height do you think his hair is? I'd say three and a half. Okay, I was gonna guess. Like That's why I tell four. people when they ask how tall I am, which <laughs> actually never happens in my adult life. But if it did, I'd say six three. <laughs> which actually never happens in my adult life. That happened a lot more when I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once you stop growing, people stop caring. Yeah. That's funny. Okay, well, we have one more question. Uh -huh. If you could give one piece of advice to mm. eighteen-year-old Nick. Oh, what would it be? Oh, 18 year old Nick. That list is long, I know. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that could be a 20 minute podcast in itself. <laughs> um, don't take stuff too seriously. Honestly, I know we just talked about all this purpose and presence. And at 18, 19 years old, the world feels so heavy on your shoulders. Take a step back. Don't stress. It's going to work out if you let it. And yeah, I'll leave it at that. That's awesome. Yeah. awesome. That's, that's strong. 
Well, Nick, we really, really appreciate having you here. This was awesome. And I think, you know, next time you're in town, we should do this again. This is I fun. So. Yeah, we can um, catch up. Maybe next time we'll have some natty lights. Maybe <laughs> maybe what we do, if Paige decides to go to the starboard and not the rudder. <sighs> on, I can't even believe we're giving them. <laughs> uh, oh, I shouldn't have even said that. It's Voldemort, bro. Yeah, R-word. I know. If Paige is going to the R word <laughs> on Saturday Memorial Day weekend. We're obviously going to be at the starboard, but maybe if you could come down to the to the cool side of town, we could shoot another podcast up in Monty's office over a couple of natty lights, and we'll do round two from Memorial Day Saturday That's it. at the office in the starboard. It's a done deal. Let's do it. Can you make that happen? Yes. I'll be there. Right. This is, I'll be there. I don't know if you can oh, be there. Oh, no. We'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll be there. Sick. No Wait. doubt about it. So, soon. <laughs> so, Paige, give us the outro, and uh, we'll, we'll pick this up uh, in Dewey Beach at the start. Yeah, awesome. Well, Nick, thank you again. Um, guys, make sure you're keeping it RE. Make sure to follow us on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Instagram, and we'll catch you next time. And don't forget to follow Resourceive and Nick Cressy. He's blasting crazy content out. Crazy. <laughs> crazy on the, on the weekly, right? Yeah. Every uh, week. Uh, Every week it's coming. So thanks for keeping it RE, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cool. Thanks, guys.